sports scene with Greg Picaveros is now on the Odyssey app and odyssey.com. Now, it's time for Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras. Here's your host, Greg Bicaveras. And welcome to our November edition of Sports Scene, produced by Odyssey. Greg Bicaveras, glad you're with us. Sports Scene with Greg Bicaveras, right here on Odyssey and other platforms as well, wherever you get your podcasts. It's a pleasure to talk to local favorite James Boyd, who went to Indian River High School. Of course, he played quarterback and then went on to play for Penn State. James, how are you, my friend? I'm fine. How are you doing today? Very good, very good. You and I have so much in common and several mutual friends as well. i got to get your opinion first. This was always a big weekend for you because it's high school football playoffs weekend. Give us a good memory of your tenure there at Indian River. Oh, man, I, like you said, it, it, it is a good, uh, a good time of the year. Um, I remember my freshman year, or probably just about every year, uh, I played at Inner River as a true freshman. Um, you know, we had a t- we was loaded uh, my freshman year. Um, you know, pretty much every year I was there. So I want to say one of the memorable years uh, we played Green Run. Um, and you know, it's funny because every time I see Coach Cadillac Harris, you know, he kind of talk about you know we knocked them off the playoff two years in a row. So um, you know, I kind of had to. Had to put be the wall up for my boy Plexico Bears not to be able to go to the playoffs and that's advancing in the playoffs. So that's a memorable moment for me. Well, actually, you know, it's funny you and I you and I met several months ago at um, one of our advertisers, the Aberdeen Barn, and of course, I actually broadcast one of your high school games. It was 1995. Y'all played against Green Run at the old Kellum High School, and I believe it was a very close game. Yeah, that game was that game was close. That game was probably closer than the first time we played. Um, that was the game we won at the end uh, when Anthony Casey caught, caught the touchdown pass at the end of the game. Yeah, those were some great memories right there. But I remember Plax did play in that game. I later saw him in, in an airport and brought it up to him, and he still had great memories as well. So, yeah, high school football going on this weekend, and James Boy was a big part of it. Well, let's uh, venture off to Penn State. You played there for four years for the legendary Joe Paterno. And, uh, of course, uh, how was the whole recruitment process? Oh, man, the recruitment process, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was interesting, um, you know, coming from here. Um, being, you know, touted as one of the top players in the in the area, um, you know, starting off as a freshman. So, you know, when I kind of got to Penn State and, and got to, you know, a lot of the schools recruiting, I had been going through the process for about three years over the summertime. Um, for me, um, one of my def- – well, my defensive coordinator at Penn State at, at Indian River at the time, Coach Johnson, um, who later on became the head coach at uh, Oscar Smith um, from Pennsylvania – so, you know, we kind of took us on a trip, asked me what what schools we wanted to go um, and visit in the summertime. So Penn State was one of the ones that we used to go to summer camps to. Absolutely. And, of course, uh, we used to broadcast uh, David Macklin's games in Newport News, and David went to Menchville, who's also in the playoffs this weekend. And, of course, he played with you at Penn State. And, of course, the game that was televised that we did of yours was the Chesapeake School System Channel. And, of course, uh they did a lot of your games back where you were in high school as well. Yeah, the Chesapeake Channel was it was a, a tremendous outlet for us because uh, that was the way for us at the time to get you know some notoriety and get some um, national or some local uh, airtime on the TV. Um, and, and David uh, David Macklin is that's that's like my brother from another. Um, you know, we met probably at thirteen, fourteen years old playing basketball with Boo Williams, um, and then I kind of reiterated and ran it to him actually. Um, I think it went to, I want to say it was my sophomore year at Penn State camp, along with a lot of the other guys from the other side on on the peninsula peninsula side. So it was that was an awesome time. And I'm glad you brought that up because I grew up here too. And you know all the guys that grew up on the peninsula on the south side, they're all like you know they played against each other, but there's no ill feelings. So it's it's a big community, a, a big rivalry. And I kind of wish we would adopt the same way North Virginia does. And you've lived up there for a while as well. Kind of like the whole Nova community, you know, Springfield, Manassas, Fairfax, you know, that whole area is kind of like bigger and together. This area has always been divided by the bridge tunnel. And as you know, they're going to build another bridge tunnel. Right. And I think, you know, that's, that's unfortunate because I think it's a good opportunity for guys on both sides of the water um, to start to build that bond and just kind of help grow and, and make the 757 that much bigger and better. 
Absolutely. We'll talk about your time there at Penn State. You did play in some bowl games. Um, and, of course, Joe wasn't ready to call it quits then, so he still had several years left. And But you did see him toward the end of his career, especially by your junior and senior year. Right. And, you know, when I got there, you know, it's fun the story because uh, Joe used to say, me and uh, our, our freshman class, we were the number one class in the country. And he liked to say uh, our freshman class was, was going to kill him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so just because it was just, you know, we just had a different mentality. Um, LeVar Anton was in that class. Um, you know, Bruce Branch out of Richmond was in that class. Uh, so we, we had a we had a loaded class. Uh, Ron, Ron Graham uh, was one of the other top linebackers out of the country uh, that year was in that class. Um, and, you know, we had about 11 or 12 people playing the high school senior game that year that was um, going to Penn State. So we, we was pretty loaded. So, you know, we did catch Joe towards the back end of his career, but he was still very active. Um, you know, I like to say, especially on defense and side of the ball, he wasn't a defense coach, so he didn't really come over and bother us much. He would watch us from behind um, and just kind of, you know, do his interpretation as far as coaching and coaches. Um, but on the offensive side of the ball, you know, he would come in and show – Kevin Thompson or Rashard Casey had to get up underneath the center. He would, get, he would go in the back pitch show the running backs how to, you know, line up and do their jab step and, and, and block and the tight ends. And it was interesting to see him at that age because he was still at that time probably in his, in his late 70s. Um, he, so it was definitely interesting. Yeah, he did coach for a long time. He was at Penn State as an assistant from 1950 to 65 and then the head coach from 66 to 2011, of course, his son was also an assistant there. But such a great legacy, the uniforms, clean uniforms, home and away. And, you know, there's something to be said about that. I remember when we interviewed Jay on Sports Scene several years ago, he said when you turn the TV on, you know Alabama's playing and Penn State's playing just by their uniforms. And I think that's missing today, you know, because Coach never went for any fads. He never went for any color rush uniforms. It was very traditional for Penn State. It was very traditional, like you said. Once you turn on the on the TV, and he felt like, you know, the the uniform itself uh, and the team as 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 a, a true team. We didn't need names on the back of the jerseys. Um, all you need to know that it was Penn State playing. It's funny because I have I have friends that played for other schools. Uh, for example, uh, Keith Burnell, um, Western Branch, and West uh, Virginia Tech, and. Played for a few teams in the league, and he always joke about it. Man, why they don't put names on y'all jerseys? And I was like, Joe, Joe just never felt the, the attention, individual attention, and it was always about team and, and just building team and being uh, unity. Talking to James Boyd, and of course, uh, Coach O'Brien did do that after Coach Paterno left, and that did not work. There's a lot of backlash. I'm kind of glad James Franklin has kept the tradition as well. Well, let's talk about the current Penn State team. You know, they're off to a great start, of course. They're always going to be measured, like you and I texted about, you know, Penn State playing Michigan or Ohio State. But uh, I think Coach Franklin's done a really good job. I think he's done a real a great job. And, and I think over the last, you know, couple decades, I think our fans have been – they we've been uh, – <laughs> they've been spoiled. Um, and, and they're so used to winning – um, and, you know, under Joe over for so long over those years um, that I think our fans give uh, James a hard time. And I think he's done a great job. He done a, he's a great recruiter. I think, you know, for me looking at it, if I have to do some critique on, on it, um, when you, if you look at the first few years when he, when he got there, he, he was going through offensive coordinators because the guys were getting jobs going somewhere else. And if he was watching the team, you saw the consistency in the defense because, you know, Brett Pratt was there and it was that was a staple of, you know, of the team and, and the defense is always going to be a staple up in State College. Um, but I just think for, you know, for the first six, seven years uh, of James' career, he was going through and having to replace the offensive coordinator so the consistency wasn't there. Talking to James Boyd, former Penn State, Nittany Lion, Greg Bickavaris, glad you're with us. For more, go to gjbtv.com. And those habits you mentioned about Coach Paterno, they're helping you today. I mean, you texted me this morning early. I responded, you can't put a price tag on being a good person, being consistent, and being true to who you are because life is not always easy. We're going to have roller coasters, whether it's business, personal, or whatever. And I think a lot of that foundation you learn from Coach Paterno has helped you as a 
person today. Yeah, and that was one of his big things, man, being being good people. Because um, at the end of the day, football was going to carry so far. And he used to tell us in the room, <clears throat> look to your right, look to your left. Everybody not going to make it to the lead. Only 4% of the people in here are going to make it to the lead. So my life, my job is to prepare you for, you know, productive citizens after football. Um, and if you get a chance to play football at the next level, uh, who knows how long that's going to be. So, you know, to, just to make sure you're productive uh, men in the community and, you know, with your family and friends and, and all of that stuff. So, um, and, you know, he had, he had that, that strong background, that military, that strong military background. So that dis- the discipline was always there. Um, before I, before I left and went to college, I was never a morning person, um, if, if, if that's even a thing. Um, but now, you know, I'm consistently up early. Um, you know, I, f- I feel like if I don't get up early, work out before eight o'clock, I feel like I, I'm, I'm, lo- I'm missing something. Right. So it's just the dedication of being disciplined enough to be able to finish and, and, and do a task. How about your time with the Jacksonville Jaguars? You didn't have a long career, but you did play. Right. So I was a third round draft pick in Jacksonville in, in 2001. Um, for me, it was it was a similar situation going to Tom Coughlin um, because they had the same. Him and Joe was kind of the same person, um, you know, the way they the, the beliefs and thoughts, um, just the discipline. Um, and and for me, that was the same on the field. It was great. Um, I got a chance to play um, the first two and a half years I was there, um, so I played quite a bit. Um, so that was a tremendous uh, opportunity where I learned under, you know, some some Hall of Fame safeties, um, Donovan Darius, Cornell Brown, um, one of my close friends, Marlon McCree, that came there when I was there. So we had a good time. Uh, we had we had a mixture of young talent and older guys um, like Jimmy Smith, uh, Keenan McCardell, uh, Tony Baselli, um, and you know, so it was it was a, we had a good time. Absolutely, and you always had great rivalries against you know the Steelers and the Titans and the Ravens, especially. And it was always an event when you guys play the Ravens. But like you said, Coughlin, you know, was a great coach with the uh, Giants as well. And of course, he coached Boston College. Right. I remember. I remember when when he got the job in, in New York. Um, my agent was uh, Tony Agnon, who is out of Baltimore, who had to who represented Bill Parcells as well, and. Michael Strahan. So I was in the office when <laughs> I was in the office when that happened, and Strahan called the office. Was like, you know, we got to have a conversation with this guy. Is these stories that I hear about him true? And it was like James sitting right here, ask him. And so he started asking me questions. I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so he was just like, oh man, this is not gonna work. But it's so interesting to see because years later you heard you heard Michael Strahan have the conversation where he just loved Tom Coughlin. And he just say, look, a lot of the stuff that he believed in, um, you know, he didn't understand until he got there and he actually went through the experience with Tom. Um, and that was kind of the same with, you know, with, with, with uh, Joe Paterno as well. And I think it's the same, too. I talk to people all the time about, you know, parenting is the same thing as parents. When you're teaching your kids, uh, you know it's right for them. You know it's the best for them. Just teaching them the discipline and teaching them life and they don't understand it until they get older. Yeah, and those relationships, like you said, you look to the right or the left, sometimes you can do business with those people you went to college with, and a lot of those things we we take for granted, but you guys rode in excellent planes, hotels, and had really good meals, and a lot of those college kids, that was a real treat for them as well. Right, man, and like you said, I think a lot of times, you know, networking, and I think networking is the strongest thing in the world. Um and being able to take advantage of your, your relationships and the people you meet, especially at that level. So you're able to meet so many people that you would normally be able to meet. Um, but just because you, you're in a situation as an athlete, um, you're around certain people, and you should take advantage of them. I, for me, after playing um, and going into, you know, work in the workforce and doing stuff, you know, doing some real estate stuff um, and doing some other stuff, um, I got into the medical device sales. Um, and the reason I got in was all of my teammates at Penn State was doing medical device sales. And I was trying to figure out why is everybody doing medical device sales. Um, so I kind of spoke to uh, one of my teammates, uh, Matt Cranchett, who had just finished playing with the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, who was the fourth round pick to the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers as a tight end. And he had played with them for about four or five years. And he was going into the workforce and he was in medical device sales. 
and you know, me and him had a conversation. He ended up introducing me to some guys in Baltimore, um, S one medical and I ended up starting with those guys in the medical space and you know, worked for those guys for ten years. So that was a tremendous opportunity that I probably wouldn't have never had. Um, you know, being that you know, I did I wouldn't have known nobody in the business, but being that my teammates and a lot of my teammates and always asking questions um, uh, came out a, a tremendous opportunity came out of. It. Yeah, great point because I remember when I was in college at George Mason, I interviewed a guy, Mr. Brotman, who is big up there in the D.C. area in public relations, and he said, "As you grow, so are your contacts and network." So pretty much side by side, growing together, and it's not just your teammates, but also your opponents that you played against. I mean, you became friends with them as well, especially in the Big Ten high school down here in the seven five seven, as well as the NFL. It's great just to uh, collaborate. Right, and, and it's funny you say that because, you know, the guy, Matt Crenchett, was our tight end uh, who introduced me to the guys in Baltimore, and he was telling me about a story with Mike Doss, who was the safety at Ohio State. Um, and Mike had, you know, Mike was in and at work in, in that space looking for stuff to do out of football, and, you know, Crenchett kind of came up, gave, he gave him opportunity to come in and learn in business. Uh, but you, you see a lot of those stories today, man. You see a lot of, you know, guys in, in that realm of sports, um, looking out for each other. And with today, the opportunity with, with social media uh, and just different avenues to be in, uh, be in your own boss and, and, and starting your own business, um, I think guys, you know, we, sh- we should see a lot more of it, um, guys getting together and just being able to utilize their contact. Yeah, not just a text club. That's how you and I met pretty much in person, but we have tons of things in common, know a lot of the same people. You mentioned Doss. My dad was a big Ohio State fan. He came down here for one of David Macklin's camps way back in the day, so I've met him too. Go ahead and plug your podcast before we let you go. Um, I, I, just, shoot, I got a podcast called Next Podcast, um, Business and Sports, um, thought, and my whole business sports theory. Um, just kind of want to spotlight a lot of people um, that's in the business world, that's doing big things in the business world, um, locally, nationally. Um, on the sports side, I like to bring on former former athletes, uh, professional and collegiate athletes, um, you know, doing stuff in the community. If it's coaching, um, if it's showing the transition, that was the whole name of the next podcast. It was the transition to show the transition of if it was sports, um, someone in sports going to business, or if it was someone in business just trans, you know, from military transitioning over to being an entrepreneur. Um, and I've met some great people. Um, we got some great episodes coming up. Um, so looking forward to, you know, finishing up the year and starting off 2024 with, with, with some great shows. Very good. James, all the best to you. All the best to uh, Penn State as they take on Michigan and they close out their season. Hard to believe the 23 season is about done. Also, your Jaguars are playing excellent football in 2023. And, of course, you're doing very well in Northern Virginia and had a lot of great uh, roots here in Hampton Roads playing for Indian River. All the best to you, and thank you for your time, your talent, and your treasure as well. Appreciate it. And and I I love the Hampton Roads area. Um, I, would, you know, I, would, I wouldn't train it in, from nowhere to where. Virginia Beach is always home. Always, always. Yeah. So very good. All right, James, all the best to you, my friend. And, of course, continued health and happiness to you and your family. Same to you. Appreciate it. James Boyd right, right there, who went to Indian River High School, played for Penn State, and played for Jacksonville, sharing some great stories about his collegiate and professional career. Stay tuned. Oh Yummy Sushi Japanese Restaurant in Kemp's River is open and ready to serve you. Featuring an all-you-can-eat experience with signature dishes from the kitchen and fresh sushi prepared for you. Oh Yummy Sushi is open for lunch and dinner daily with dine-in, carry-out, as well as DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Grubhub. Located at 1255 Fordham Drive at the Kemp's River Crossing. Call 937-2011 for Oh Yummy Sushi, the best sushi in Hampton Roads. Matney Gallery consults for museum acquisitions and investment art for private and public collections in Virginia and elsewhere. They are specialists in Southern art and photography, international contemporary, and Virginia colleges. For more, log on to lindamatneygallery.com. Mi Hogar is your restaurant for the finest Mexican cuisine in Hampton Roads. At Mi Hogar, everything is prepared fresh in a casual and comfortable atmosphere. Enjoy traditional favorites such as quesadillas, tacos, burritos, and fajitas, as well as refreshing beverages. Mi Hogar is located at 4201 Granby Street and is a tradition in Norfolk. Call 640-7705 and log on to MiHogarMexicanRestaurant.com. At Mi Hogar, there's something for everyone. 
thank you for listening to Sports Scene. Always great to connect at Greg Bick on YouTube. That's G-R-E-G-B-I-C. Subscribe. Also, Greg Bick on Twitter as well. For more, go to GJBTV.com, H-R-S-M-H-O-F.com, and Hampton Roads Online Mall. Dot com. Also connect with me on LinkedIn, Greg Bickavaris, and also Facebook, Greg Bickavaris as well. Sports Team with Greg Bickavaris is on the Odyssey app and odyssey.com. Thank you. I love hydroponics and Newport News, your growth store on the peninsula, the premier place for supplies and consultation, build a soil, AC and infinity and other top products available, including many more located at 954 J Clyde Morse Boulevard in Newport News. Like them on Facebook. They are open daily. Cecil and his staff will greet you the minute you walk in with your best interest in mind. I love hydroponics in Newport News, the premier store on the peninsula for supplies and consultation. So, what's Greg's problem? I'm very mad! God, I'm so mad right now! I know you're mad. I know you're upset. It's time for what teased Greg off. All right, what tees me off always a favorite segment. Greg Picavaris along with Ken Carson. Ken, people that always go to the store and say, do you want to round off some change? I'm like, really? Can you imagine if we did that everywhere? Wouldn't it be nice if they rounded down? Yes. Hey, would you mind rounding down the total for me? Exactly. Neighbors leaves going everywhere but in their own yard, and they never pick them up. What's up with that? Mm-hmm. You know what tees me off, Greg? When it's time to vote and you plan ahead, request a mail-in ballot, and then you forget you have it, so you show up to vote, and they tell you you need the mail-in ballot so they can void it, and then you have to go back home. This is not hypothetical. No, someone who never pays for a meal, Kenny, and says, please tip more next time. What? Yeah, they never pay. Getting the right sauce at restaurants, it always seems like something's missing, whether it's the hot sauce, the ketchup, the mustard, the mayonnaise, the salt, the pepper. Is it too hard to have salt and pepper on the table? People who clap when the plane lands. And people who use the word literally in literally every sentence. Lack of paper towels and napkins, whether you're at home or on the road at a restaurant. It seems like there's never enough of those. I was at the Bill Burr concert last night, and they had that roll sitting on the sink, and you have to put your fingers in the roll and go, eh, and everybody's had their fingers inside the roll. kind of defeats the purpose. And that's what teases us off. Sports Scene with Greg Bicavaris is now on the Odyssey app and odyssey.com. And welcome back to our November edition of Sports Scene, all powered by lindamatneygallery.com, gjbtv.com, and our good friends at the Marksman. Hope you enjoyed our friend, Mr. Boyd from Penn State, James Boyd, who played for the Nittany Lions and locally at Indian River, and he also played for Jacksonville. George, how are you, my friend? Uh, doing well, Greg. How about yourself? Very good, very good. Glad we're past Election Day. Talking to George McLean, who is the owner of the Marksman. And, of course, a big part of the Marksman this time of the year is the military. And they honor that tradition yearly, weekly, monthly, however you want to say it. Military Mondays and First Responder Fridays. And it takes on special significance during the holiday season. Well, you know, we, we always like to, to reach out for those that are there, you know, for us. Uh, obviously, our first responders uh, are, and the military as well. So this is uh, something we do, you know, uh, for them on a on a, uh, a daily basis. So this gives them a little bit of extra incentive to uh, come in and, uh, you know, get rid of a little stress, have a little fun on the range. Yeah, please Google the Marksman Firearms Training Center and Indoor Shooting Range. Like them on Facebook. Their phone numbers are 757-872-4130 as well. So, George, when people walk into the store in November, what are they likely to see, and how is the stock and inventory? Well, stock is pretty good. Uh, we've got you know, kind of pr- pretty much what we want as far as numbers. Uh, some different uh, you know, manufacturers still a little difficult. And I, I think they're playing catch-up you know, from – you know, COVID times there was you know so many, especially with the uh, you know, Sig and, and Glock, uh, somewhat with with Remington, um, that you know people want certain you know uh, model you know firearms and they just weren't available. So I I think they've been playing you know catch. I don't know that the, the manufacturers have gotten their manufacturing facilities back up to 100% with personnel. Uh, that seems to have been uh, an issue with uh, everyone getting. People coming back in after you know shutdowns, and uh, so we, we we see that in several industries, not just uh, not just ours. But uh, typically, you know, you come in uh, anything that you should be typically the shooter's looking for. Uh, you will know, we'll have in stock any particular firearm you're looking for. If we don't have it in stock, 
weekend uh, you order before you get it in within a couple of days uh, if it's available uh, you know, from the manufacturers. We have you know, quite a bit, keep you know, a, a lot of stuff in our you know, warehousing you know, uh, inventory that's available to us, and so it minimizes you know, the amount that we have to actually physically stock in the store, but it's, it's readily available. And the phone number is 757-872-4130, open Monday through Saturday, and don't forget the great shooting range as well. Unfortunately, George, we had another mass shooting, mass killing, this time in Maine. Of course, really sad. Hope we're not getting just uh, used to it and becoming numb to it. It just shows you we have to have our guard up, and you never know what these criminal minds are doing. That's why they create such TV shows like Law & Order, because you go by the law, but the criminals don't go by any order at all. Well, and and that's that's the the biggest point that we we just don't seem or can't seem to get – our, our liberal side of politicians uh, educated on that, you know, you can have all the laws you want. The only people that's going to obey them are people like you and me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we're going to obey the law. But, uh, you know, the criminals, they don't care what the laws are. You know, it, you know we already have a law that says, you know, it's a, it's against the law to, to take a life. Uh, but yet people are out there doing it you know, every day, whether they do it with firearms or do it with knives or I've mentioned this before, even go back to the days of Cain and Abel doing it with a rock. So, you know, they can use whatever tool they want. And, you know, of course, you know, the, the liberals want to always get rid of the firearms. But firearms isn't the problem. It's it's the people, the problem. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we gotta, we got to get down a little bit deeper into that and you know, just what causes people to go off the rocker and, and, and do stuff like that. Uh, but it's, it's, it's happened since the beginning of time. So I, I don't... I don't foresee, uh, you know, an, an, an end to that type of activity. Yeah, even vehicles. When you're crossing the street into a big shopping center or a big box store, there are people not looking. It gets dark early now. There are some negative people out there that will want to test the the water there and test the pattern of a person trying to cross the street. So vehicles are also very dangerous. And let me say one thing about these criminals: they use a lot of these bump stocks. And bump fire stocks are gun stocks that can be used to assist in bump firing. Bump firing is the act of using the recoil of a semi-automatic. What are your thoughts of semi-automatics, George? Well, I, I don't have a problem with the semi-automatic. Uh, and to be honest with you, I, I don't have a problem with the with the bump stocks again being used uh, you know, legally. Uh, it's it's the you know the, the criminal mind. You know you can uh, again you can try to regulate that all you want, but it's you're you're just not going to do it. Uh, I'm I'm hearing rumors that uh, this ban on the bump stocks is probably going to go away. You know, and what they're doing with it, for for those who don't know, and and, and you you said it correctly, it, it uses the recoil of the uh, of the firearm, so it 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 basically uh, imitates a fully automatic uh, firearm. Uh, and fully automatic firearms are illegal, uh, you know, for the, you know, the general you know, uh, population. There are, you know, law enforcement and obviously military to, that have that. But what the bump stock uh, does, it, it, it simulates a fully automatic firearm very effectively, uh, just using that, that, that recoil. And it, it allows you to where a semi-automatic firearm will fire one round for every time you pull the trigger. But using that recoil, that activates it quicker with just your finger on the trigger and keeping it there. And the recoil releases your finger. It's still in touch with the trigger, but it releases that, that mechanism and then fires it in rapid succession. So that's that's what it's doing. What's it good for? You know, going out and having some fun, you know, at, that, at the range, uh, again, doing things you know, in, in a legal setting. Uh can it be used illegally? Yes, we we certainly saw that in uh, Las Vegas. So, I mean, in anything that you have, people can make something bad out of it. Uh, and you're right, whether it's you know uh, vehicles, uh, again firearms, any other, a screwdriver, uh, you know, in, in a knife. You know, we got you know kitchens you know full of knives. I, I do a lot of gourmet cooking myself. I've got you know very very nice uh, you know Japanese and German you know knives in my kitchen. Can they be used to kill somebody? Absolutely. If I was of that mindset, I'm not. But there are people out there who are. Especially the weak-minded people, you're right. You know, just the before and after, the thought process. You and I are, you know, functioning adults. We're going to work. We're talking to our families. We're going to the grocery store, just trying to get to our home safely. But criminals, you know, the thought of all that negativity, the acting out, the violence, just like 
in the Gaza and the Hamas, those negative demons that killed the good Jewish people in Israel, you know, this the demonic thoughts of a criminal is pathetic and, you know, needs to be stopped, whether it's during wartime or just during civilian life, just trying to get to and from the big box store, going to church, going to your favorite restaurant. You know, you really have to be mindful. I don't remember back when I was a kid growing up having to worry about the minutia of daily life because we were guarded or something. But now, George, going out is a big deal. Yeah, uh, it, it really is, and, and I think it hurts a lot of uh, you know uh, industries. The restaurant industry, probably one of the uh, one of the big ones. You know, especially you know after COVID, they got people used to you know not I say used to to not going out, but it, it just brought a lot of things to uh, to light uh, that they you know can really subsist without going out you know to to eat. We I still like to you know, to go out, but at the same time. You have to look at the at, at the folks that's you know out there mingling around, and we you know, we see all these instances uh, where people walk in, even the fast food restaurants, and you know pull out a gun and start you know start shooting, or someone gets mad because their their burger got put on the bun upside down or whatever, and, and they you know take it out on on the staff and start destroying stuff, and then the guns come out and and people start getting shot. So uh, again, you know, it, it's you're, you're right. As you started this this episode, is you know, we need to be aware because you're not going to stop it. it it's that, that risk is uh, always going to be there, and so that's why I, I recommend that uh, you know folks who legally can uh, you know attend a firearms training course and, and get your concealed permit and and be prepared and carry where it's legal to carry. Obviously, there are some. Uh, establishments that have signs that says, you know, no firearms, and by law, you have to abide by that. Uh, but if it's not posted, then you, you certainly can, you know, carry. And, you know, the whole thing is when you're carrying concealed, you're not pulling it out and showing anybody that you're carrying it. So they can't see it. It's not causing any issues, but it's there as your backup if you need it for self-defense of yourself, your family, or you know, an, another member stranger that you may not even know. Uh, the law uh, permits you to uh, take uh, lethal action if that's required to save the life of, of you know, a, a stranger. Even if, if they're, if you, you know, can reasonably assume uh, that their life uh, or their their person uh, is in you know, the danger of serious bodily uh, injury or uh, harm you know, or death. So it, it pays to know the law. You need to know the law, and if you don't know the law, don't carry. I mean, it's it's, it's kind of that simple. But you know, be be prepared. And when we say that, almost every episode uh, that we do is be aware of your surroundings, especially with the holidays coming up. We're off of daylight savings time now, so it's getting darker sooner. Uh, you know, that's that's going to bring these these bent minds you know back out, uh, especially you know they, they with the holidays and the use of darkness as as a crutch for them. It gives them more of an opportunity to sneak up on somebody and grab whatever's in their arms as they're loading it in their trunk or walking to their car. So, you know, we just need to be cognizant of, of what's happening. Yeah, I've got to do some side work sometimes at night. We all got to go out to eat. But like you said, a criminal mind thrives when it gets dark. They just do. But also, George, responsibility of the gun owner is also to go to your local range and learn about the proper equipment, go through the safety protocols, the handling courses, whatever it takes to put, um, you know, ammunition and operate a gun properly. It's not just buying one. There's a lot of before and after. And I also want to bring this up, too. There are criminals that are, you know, successors and people that use people to go buy a gun. And that's a serious crime if a person buys one for a convicted felon. Well, it, it, it's a crime if they buy one for anyone, uh, especially uh, a, a convicted felon. Uh, but you know, we, we call that a straw purchase. There are signs. Obviously, I'm not going to discuss you know, what those are, but there are things we look for uh, in, in every transaction that might indicate uh, that you know this is a straw purchase. And and if we have that feeling, we don't you know nothing <laughs> nothing has to be documented. I mean, the ATF tells us you know every, every time you know, we we get something from them, it's it's up to the the license holder, uh, wh- which is me. Uh, I've got you know, the the FFL for for my business, but it's up to myself to ensure that the employees uh, are trained. They know what to, to look for, and if they have a suspicion. 
then that's all it has to be if they have a suspicion that this is an, an illegal sale. In other words, it's, it's, it's a straw purchase that's it's being attempted. Uh, we, we stop the transaction right there. And we have people get mad. They say, well, you know, this is you know, perfectly legal, da 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 And, you know, so whatever the reasoning is, you know, we may and probably won't go into why we think that it is a, an illegal uh, you know, a, attempt at the purchase, but we stop the transaction. So we may have lost a few customers uh, over that. Uh, from what we get from from law enforcement, you know, coming in, that that the marksman has uh, an excellent reputation of being uh, the one uh, in, in in the area. Not saying we're the only one, but uh, our name is out. That we're, we're you know don't don't go to the marksman to try to you know pull something pull the wool over somebody's eyes because they're going to catch you. And uh, so we, we typically do that. We work very closely with law enforcement. They work very closely with us. And we get uh, kudos from them all the time <clears throat> for not taking chances and selling firearms to people who uh, who shouldn't have them. And, George, that's a conversation you have frequently with Sherry and the staff over there to keep their eyes open as well. Absolutely. Yeah, you got to be on your toes. Especially during the holiday season. All right, George, leave us with a kind word here for November and something to think about. Well, the thing about is uh, what I mentioned just a little earlier. We're we're off a of daylight savings time. It's it's dark now, very you know, early. It's of course it's it's light in the daytime, you know, in, in the morning when you get up. But that's not where the problem is. Problems in the evening uh, typically. So when you're out shopping around, again, be be safe, be safe, be conscious, be aware of uh, of what's happening. You know, the best uh, advice I can give anybody: park under a a, uh, a lamp, you know, in in the parking lot. Try to have somebody with you. You know, when you're doing your shopping, just don't go by yourself. You know, especially if it's a big parking lot, then you've got to walk quite a ways. Have company, go in pairs. George, all the best for your uh, staff there for November. We look forward to talking to you in December, and of course, have a good rest of the week. All right, you too, Greg. Have a good uh, Thanksgiving, and uh, we'll we'll see you next month. A tradition of excellence for over 50 years is the Aberdeen Barn Steakhouse in Virginia Beach. Start your experience off with she crab soup, an assortment of appetizers such as the fried oyster, Rockefeller, crispy calamari, just to name a few. Aberdeen Barn has the finest premium steaks, prime rib, grilled tomahawk ribeye, seafood, chicken, pasta dishes, and live music in a most pleasing atmosphere. Open daily. Visit them at 5805 Northampton Boulevard in Virginia Beach. Call 464-1580 and log on to Aberdeen Barn Net. This segment is brought to you by Linda Matney Art Gallery. Go by and see John Lee Matney and the great staff right there where art comes alive in Williamsburg. Always great exhibits, great shows, excellent website as well, lindamatneygallery.com. Give them a call at 757-675-6627. And of course, they are on Facebook, Linda Matney Gallery. Fine art, exquisite art. Don't let art vanish in Williamsburg. Right there at Linda Matney Art Gallery, the premier art gallery in Hampton Roads in Virginia is the Linda Matney Art Gallery. They are on social media. Sakura Japanese Restaurant in Chesapeake is your destination for excellent Japanese food featuring fresh sushi and hot dishes prepared in the kitchen for lunch and dinner. Sakura is located at 1437 Sam's Drive at the Walmart Way Crossing. Oh Yummy Sushi is at the Renaissance Place at 401 North Great Neck Road in Virginia Beach. Both Sakura in Chesapeake and Oh Yummy Sushi in Virginia Beach are available with DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, and Pickup. Tasty Japanese food the way you want it is at Sakura and Oh Yummy Sushi. Sushi. C.P. Shuckers, two locations in Virginia Beach, Shore Drive, Pacific Avenue, best food in the beach, decades of excellence. Matt, Mark, Chef Leon, and the great staff will take care of you for lunch and dinner and late night. Something for everyone. All the sports on TV. Watch all the games right there at C.P. Shuckers. Eat or be eaten. Outback Steakhouse in Kempsville and Virginia Beach open daily for lunch and dinner. Mike and the staff will take good care of you. Burgers, steaks, salads, appetizers, desserts, and much more. Great atmosphere, nice bar, spacious dining room. 1255 Fordham Drive in Virginia Beach. I want to thank the Peninsula Sports Club for myself being honored on January 22nd at Joe and Mima's Restaurant in Yorktown at 6 p.m., for an award by the Peninsula Sports Club for my broadcasting career. Look forward to it. I'm grateful for several people that have worked with me along the way for several decades, both on the air and behind the scenes. As my mother would always say, it takes a village for successful people to get things done. Nobody can do things by themselves. Once again, thank you to the Peninsula Sports Club for the second time 
being honored by that prestigious club. I want to thank our guests today, James Boyd and George McLean. For more, go to ggbtv.com. Click the YouTube link at Greg Bick on YouTube, G-R-E-G-B-I-C. For Ken Carson, happy November, happy Thanksgiving. I'm Greg Bickaveras. We'll talk to you soon. You've been listening to Sports Scene with Greg Bickaveras. 